Every four years, the Olympic Games give us a new gymnastic sweetheart. Cute little elf-like creatures who seem no bigger than these dolls. They dance, twirl, and tumble their way into our hearts. You remember the names from the past. Olga, Nadia, and Mary Lou. Well, now there's a new gymnastic sweetheart. Barcelona brought a Shannon Miller. She's an American and an Oklahoman. Fifteen-year-old Shannon Miller is now one of the biggest names in gymnastics. She earned this honor at the sport's greatest spectacle, the Olympic Games. After leading her team to the bronze medal, Shannon was in fourth place, heading into the last rotation. Her vault seemed almost perfect. Shannon's coach, Steve Nuno, thought so, and so did the judges. The gold medal was in her grasp. Only Ukrainian Tatiana Gutsu of the unified team stood in her way. From the sidelines, Shannon Miller saw her gold medal disappear. Even though she just missed the coveted all-around title, Shannon did come away from Barcelona with a record five medals, three silver and two bronze. This vaulted the little 70-pound Oklahoman into the international spotlight and into the hearts of her hometown. She returned to Edmond to a hero's welcome. most of us have seen since Shannon came home from the Olympics. This is what we haven't seen, the grueling hours behind the glamorous spotlight. At least six days a week, five hours a day, Shannon's in the gym. After Barcelona, she took only three days off from practice. Shannon Miller has grown up in Edmond. She lives with mom and dad, brother and sister. Her childhood was like that of many other kids. She liked animals and vacations, holidays and hobbies. But unlike most kids, Shannon's hobby would take her on a trip to fame and hopefully even fortune. Shannon, when did you first begin doing gymnastics? Were you one of those little girls who stood on your head at age two? Yeah, about uh, me and my sister were flipping around um, when we were really little. I started actually doing gymnastics when I was five. When did you first realize that you were getting pretty good at this sport, that you might really go someplace with it? Um, I think my turning point was when I went to the Soviet Union for a gymnastics camp there, and I saw how good all the girls were there, and I wanted to come back and do just as well. And so that's when I came to Steve's gym and started competing. Who were some of your earlier role models? Um, I didn't really have that many because I never watched gymnastics. I couldn't sit still just to watch <laughs> it. I had to be up doing it or something. Um, I always heard about Nadia. Of course, I wasn't. Um, I didn't see the Olympics then, but um, Mary Lee Retton was also one of them. What's a typical day like for you when you're in training? Um, during the school year, I usually get up and go to gym for couple hours in the morning and then I go to school till 2.30 and then I come back to gym from 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock. What, if anything, have you missed about having a so-called normal teenage life? Um, I think I've been fortunate. Um, I've been able to keep a pretty normal life. Most gymnasts have to live away from home and things like that. I go to public school. I live at home and early gymnastics is just kind of like a hobby. Like, other kids do soccer or football or whatever. I but, do it's, but it's a hobby that you spend how many hours a day usually? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot more than most people. Yeah. Was there ever a time when you said, this is just too hard, it's too much training, it's, it's too no. much for me? No, I've always had my goals, um, each little goal, and all the way up to the Olympics, which was my main goal. And I never stopped to think about it, just kept training. When did you first set the Olympics as your goal? Um, I didn't really one day say, 
um, the Olympics. I want to go there. Um, I just kind of kept working towards it, and I knew that that was the biggest meet, and so I wanted to go there then. About probably um, five years I've been training for that meet. Tell me about the Olympics. What memories now stand out the most? Um, there's a bunch of memories. Um, probably the most was standing on the podium receiving the medal. What was going through your mind then? Um, all different things. Um, how my coaches had supported me, my family, and how much training I had gone through to be there on the podium. What about the actual competition? What was the pressure like? Um, it wasn't... There wasn't any more pressure there than there is at any other competition, really, because I had been competing with most of the gymnasts I had seen before in other competitions. You never stopped to think about the millions of people watching on television? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why do you think you had such a great Olympics when some of the other girls, like Kim Zemesco, for instance, faltered? Um, well, I was happy to have done as well as I did. I worked really hard for it. I had elbow surgery. Um, back at the end of March, and after that, I wanted to really buckle down and train really hard so I wouldn't have any chance of missing the team or, you know, having to regret something. I always, I just wanted to go and be able to say I did the best I could. How's your life changed since the Olympics? Um, I'm a lot busier now. <laughs> um, right after the Olympics, I did Regis and Kathy Lee, and I've been doing some other things. I just got back from the six-week tour. Um, with some of the gymnasts from the Unified team. And now I'm back in school, and I'm still training. Were you disappointed in not winning a gold medal? Um, I was at first, but then I realized, um, you know, that's 12 thousandths of a point that I missed it by, and I was happy to have gotten silver because half a tenth less, and I would have gotten fourth and not medaled at all. So. You, of course, are now a role model, and millions of young kids look up to you. How do you feel about that? That's fun. It's neat because I remember having people to look up to, and hopefully I'll set a good example. Have there been lots of requests for appearances and endorsements and that kind of thing? Um, yeah, a lot of appearance things, autograph signings. Do you get tired of that? Not really, no. <laughs> you enjoy the fruits yeah. of your labor. So. Have the kids at school treated you any differently? Um, not too much. And some of the new students, when they come, they hear about it. And we've got a big sign up at our school that says, Home of Jim Miller. So. Um, but most of the kids I've been in with, like since first grade, I've been there with. So they understand what I've been through. And that that was a goal of mine for a long time. Have the Olympics changed Shannon Miller? I don't think so, not too much. What's in the future for you? What do you want to do for the um, next few years? Well, I'm definitely going to keep competing for this year, and I'll just take it a year at a time, and hopefully I'll be able to compete in Atlanta. I think that'd be great. Um, really, that's all I know about right now. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do after. You know, I know I'm going to go to college, but I'm not sure what area I want to get into. Or anything. You haven't thought too much about life after gymnastics? No. <laughs> want to be a coach, maybe? Um, maybe. What contribution do you hope you have made to the sport of gymnastics? Um, hopefully, I've set a good example for the kids here, and help, hopefully I'll get other kids interested in doing gymnastics, because it's a great sport and it's a lot of fun. What advice would you give other young kids who hope to le reach the same level of competition as you have? Um, I would tell them that it's hard work, but it's a lot of fun, too, so just stick with it. 